In this example, we will look at a couple more challenging problems with adding and subtracting and collecting like terms and radicals. So first we are going to simplify fully, expressing the answer in the form. Again, we have this tip for the form. So if your answer does not look like this, where the term in front, sorry, the number in front is an integer, this means integer, and the number underneath is a natural number, right? That's a positive counting number. And B is as small as possible. So we want to simplify that. All these clues in here add information to the command term simplify. All right? So as we're starting, the first thing to do is try to break apart this 90. So just like in day one, we try to turn it into a perfect square factor. We can see that 9 goes into 90. 10 times. And the x just sits underneath there because it's not an x squared term. There's nothing else, no perfect square factor of x. Then the 4 stays. The 800 can be broken down into 400, okay, which is 20 times 20. And that leaves us with 400 times 2 and x. Right? So, 400 times 2 is 800, <clears throat> and now we can simplify negative 3. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 10x, there's nothing else we can do. Then we're adding 4. The square root of 400 is 20. And then we have the root of 2x. <clears throat> now, it's important to recognize here that this here and this here are not like. Okay, so we cannot collect them. However, we can take these numbers and multiply them together. So you have negative 9 square root of 10x plus 4 times 20 is 80 square root of 2x. At this point, because this and this are not the same, we are finished. If they were the same, we could carry on like in the previous video and collect them together. This next example is going to take a little bit more thinking. We are asked to write in simplest radical form a plus b root n. Again, there's lots of clues here. Our final answer, a and b should be rational. That means they can be written as some kind of fraction. And n is an integer. Okay. Now, we can't take square roots of negatives, so we could have also used the fact that n is natural here. That would have also been a good symbol to use. But integer, or we could have said positive integer, right? Because all underneath the square root sign, we'll definitely have a positive integer or a natural number. However, those are both subsets of the integers, so we're okay. All right? So first, you have a fraction here, and the 72. So let's work on that. So 2 plus... 72 breaks into, let's see, 9 times 36. You could break it into 36 and 2, which is the most efficient way to break it apart. You could have also picked 9 and 8, but then you would have to further break the 8 down into 4 and 2. So try to pick the biggest square factor that goes in. If you don't get it, don't worry, just keep checking. Okay? Now, it's important to recognize here that this negative sign distributes to both terms inside. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. So negative, let's keep the bracket for now and just concentrate on one thing at a time. And the first thing we'll do is simplify thirds. All right, so 128 Again, the biggest square factor is 64. Okay, you could start with 2, but it would, you know, or sorry, 4 and keep going. But 64 times 2 is perfect, right? There's another clue here. You see the square root of 2 and the square root of 2. So that's a little bit of a clue that we're in the right direction. We have the same simplified radical. Okay, 64 times 2 is 128. Now, at this point, let's tidy it up. 2 plus square root of 36 is 6, root 2 divided by 6, 
subtract 7 over 3 inside of brackets minus 8 root 2. Okay. At this point, let's distribute. And we'll have a look here. This negative, we'll make this negative and change this to positive. So now I have a numerator, which is quite long. 2 plus 6 root 2 divided by 6, subtract 7 over 3. Then this becomes a plus 8 root 2. Now you notice you've got this fraction, subtract a number fraction, adding a number with a radical. So our next job is common denominator. And our common denominator can be a 3 in this case. Hmm, messy writing. Okay, so 2 and 6 reduce to 1 third. Here 6 and 6 I want the common denominator of 3, so therefore I'm going to divide both by, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I'm going to get 3 root 2 over 3. Subtract 7 root 3, and then here I need to multiply the top and bottom by 3 to get a common denominator come back to blue here, so plus 24 root 2 divided by 3. Now we have two different things here, we have this fraction and this fraction, and then we have things with root 2's involving fractions. So collect like radicals, and add the fractions at the same time. Okay, so here those go together as do the numbers. Being careful, 1 third subtract 7 thirds is negative 6 thirds. And 3 root 2 over 3 add 24 root 2 over 3. So 3 plus 24 is 27 root 2 over 3. And finally, what you want to do is simplify. So if we take our final result, negative 6 over 3 is, oops, that's not very nice, negative 2. And 27 divided by 3 reduces to 9 and root 2. Okay. There's a big hint that our answer is correct after all this work because it's in the form a plus b root n where we can't simplify the root 2 any further. We have a number in front of it, and we have a number in front of that where we're adding where it doesn't have a radical. Let's recap the steps because this was quite challenging, level 5, 6, and it's um, uh, got a lot going on. So the first thing we did was we simplified the thirds. We looked at the root 72 and the root 128. We broke them down into their perfect square factors as far as we could. There was a challenging part here where we had to distribute the negative. A lot of students missed that negative sign distributing through to everything in the brackets till it closes. And these problems look complicated, but as you chip away at them one at a time, you're all right. Next, we've got a common denominator because we're adding and subtracting fractions. Be careful to break this fraction into the two pieces, here and here. And then collect the radicals with the radicals, the underlined double green lines, and the numbers with the numbers, and simplify. So, quite a problem, challenging level 5-6 problem, broken into a number of small pieces, is manageable.